We are back. Uh, we continue with uh, Hasid Prasan. Uh, hello, how are you? Hi, Santiago. How are you doing? I'm good. So today you're going to talk about a high performance a data processing with Python, a Kafka and Elasticsearch. Uh, if you yeah. are ready, we can start. All right. OK. Sounds good. So let's begin with uh, my talk. So hi, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, today, I will be speaking on high performance data processing with Python, Kafka, and Elasticsearch. To provide an overview, like how, uh, or like to provide an overview, all kind of applications these days work on data. Uh, data is used to represent a set of information, and sometimes this set of information is either so large or uh, crucial that it needs a better infrastructure to perform updates faster to the data store. So in this talk, we will be further looking how this can be achieved. All right. So before uh, beginning with my talk, uh, I will better tell more about myself. Uh, I am currently working as a software engineer at Grofers. It's India's largest e-grocery shopping platform. I completed my bachelor's in technology in electronics and communication. Recently, last year, from LLM Institute of Information Technology. It's in India. Uh, I have been past participant in open source programs like Google Summer of Code, where I have experience working with the open source organizations like uh, POS Asia and CERN. Both are like open source based organizations. Uh, I've been like active contributor in these organizations in the past. Yeah, so before uh, proceeding with my talk, uh, let's talk about what will be the overview of my talk. So first of all, I will be first discussing about the problem statement related to when we process high data and where messaging queues can be helpful, which will give an idea what we are going to talk about in upcoming slides. Then, uh, secondly, then I will be discussing about the solution to solve the problem, since as of my title hints about the messaging queues. So we will be discussing about the producer-consumer design model. And, uh, and I will be taking one real world example, how these actually work. And I will keep it really simple to understand like how things will be connecting with each other. Afterwards, I will discuss more about end-to-end uh, -end workflow, like how the components of the solution are connecting with each other, and how we are solving problem to process data more efficiently and faster. And then at the last, I will be giving a code walkthrough how things are working in terms of code, and uh, will end with conclusion, learnings, and QA session. All right, so let's begin. So let's start with the problem statement first. So imagine uh, you are creating your own retail shopping app. Let's say you are an entrepreneur and you want to create a retail shopping app. Now you deployed this app on an app store. So it can be available publicly to the customers and they can use it to place an order from your app. Now let's consider how this app is working currently at the moment. We have a customer who will place an order through your app. Once this order is placed successfully, it will send an acknowledgement to the customer like, hey, your order has been placed. We will deliver it to you by the next day. So after sending the acknowledgement to the customer, the app should make changes in the data store internally to provide a better user experience. Um, by what this is I mean? So let me explain a bit furthermore. Uh, here we will be using our data store to store product related information. So let's say since you are creating a retail shopping app, so your data store must have a, a product related information in your data store. Uh, like, uh, and it can have information like product inventory, its price, its name, etc. In our case, uh, behavior should be like once the order is placed for the product, as you can see, it should update its inventory in the data store to avoid unnecessary orders for the same product. Because let's say if you have a same product uh, having a stock of five units and uh, one customer orders it like all the five units and another customer is trying to place an order with the same product having a zero stock out. So in this case, uh, things can go wrong. 
so in this way like uh, it should so that is why we are using a data store. like this is we are using to avoid any unnecessary orders for the same product now assume that the things are going well and uh, current workflow is working fine for you you have let's say receiving an average order rate uh, let's say 10 orders per day now based on the customer experience like things are going well your app is doing great and in the market people are talking about your app and they are like hey let's try this out it's a really cool retail app then more customers will get on board on your platform so based on the customer experience uh, more people will register on your app to place an order for a product they want. Let's say it gets scaled from 10 customers to 10,000 customers. All right. So that is like 1,000 times for daily active users on your app. So in this case, this can be a bit challenging to provide them a better ex customer experience. So uh, like as I mentioned earlier, like the main issue can be like uh, products getting out of stock and uh, customers are not getting what they want, right? So if we look this problem in more detail, we can see the how our services are working, the overall app workflow, how it's working. So if we look inside the app component, we can see how it's working internally. The, there are two services handling the request. Service one is responsible for providing the content on the app. And the service two is responsible to update the data store based on event like order place successfully. Uh, so now this is what a problem looks here. This flow is having uh, many drawbacks. First is you don't know what are the number of updates your data store might be receiving since uh, now the customers are from uh, now the customers like thousand times on platform. Then you really don't know like at like what are the numbers of the updates of the different different products you are receiving as an update on your data store. Second is, what is the rate of events being received by background service two from service one? So basically my background service two is acting as an update as I mentioned earlier. And the service one is actually acting as for the product visibility. All right. So in this case, we don't know how much rate of events we can expect. Sometimes there can be a traffic spike. Sometimes there can't be any traffic spike. So how we can handle such situations. Third is uh, the another third drawback is slow and synchronous updates. This can happen due to like since the number of customers are really high, this can cause uh, low throughput in the overall systems and the low or like the low throughput can cause the overall increase in latency for the services working and handling all the external requests. Uh, this can be uh, costly in terms of business since it's disturbing the user experience and not able to provide a correct information on the app. Uh, and the, another final drawback I can think of is like, uh, you might face time of errors if the systems will be receiving too many of requests at the same time. So also there can be chances, you can also develop some risk conditions as well if your service is working as concurrent. So to solve such drawbacks, we use a famous design pattern called the producer-consumer model. Uh, let's understand how it's working technically. Here is a messaging queue, uh, which is responsible to process uh, like the data coming from the producer to the consumer. So basically, a messaging queue is can be a process where it can be, it would be having a data structure in memory to store the upcoming messages and consuming those messages. It can be the process running on the same machine as the other components interacting with the queue, or it can be running on a different external machine and other components interacting with the queue. Uh, in short, like uh, on the another, another external machine. Messages are like a small size data which tells what task has to be done. So here we have uh, two components, producer and consumers and producer is responsible to generate the message and push it to the queue and the consumer is responsible to pick the message and do the processing as for the message producer keeps on pushing pushing the messages and the consumer keeps on consuming and those uh, messages so in this way like we can use 
the messaging queue and it is actually helping us to decouple the load on the overall systems one another good reason to use such pattern is that somehow let's say uh, my consumer so the consumers which are basically taking the updates in store and sending those updates to our my data store somehow if they get stopped working then in this case producer will keep on pushing the load to the messaging queue and our queue will hold it until the consumers are up again and stable in the production this will uh, actually help us to keep data more persistent and will and will help us to receive important important updates to our data store without any loss of any information so uh, this is how our solution looks like so let's say uh, now you are facing a lot of challenges in processing the high data on your uh, app and uh, you were facing let's say app experience was really slow or uh, race conditions were being developed which were causing a lot of breakdowns in the production now using this pattern this is how a solution looks like here uh, here uh, we will be using a messaging queue in our app flow as you can see so uh, i have taken for this example i have taken a no sql database uh, which is a elastic search where i will be storing my all the products information here kafka will be used as a messaging queue to keep track of information from producer that is from retail shopping app service will be so the service will be consuming the information at some rate there is some rate let's say it's uh, some imaginary rate we are doing since we don't have much uh, information so let's assume there is some kind of rate by which the information is getting consumed here we can define our business logic also and can process it accordingly so once that data is processed the service will be responsible to send that update to the elastic search which is my basically product data store the app will re request this piece of information again and the new information will be visible to the customers so let's go through it once again so basically uh, i'm using this app i i just bought one product having an inventory let's say one or two then this inventory update will go through my kafka then it will be consumed by the service then the service will be responsible to take that update and process it and then after processing it will send this update to my data store that is elastic search and once it will be updated on my elastic search again my app will be uh, like all the products will be visible to the customers with the fresh information uh, without any loss or any downtime at the production so the advantages we can see here of this flow uh, the process will be kind of you can implement it implement it as asynchronous which means that you can queue them and consume it when you want and you can have multiple consumers as well it also helps you like uh, you can separate out the business logic from the service and uh, messaging queue will be working separately third is like performance monitoring and the metrics which i think of so basically uh, by performance monitoring and metrics i mean uh, so the rate at which the bits will be coming you can clearly estimate that things like how much traffic spike you are experiencing or how much uh, your app is handling the load and the metrics you can see if the app is performing really well how much is the throughput and the latency being uh, occurring on your app also uh, it's a more resilient solution that means you have very very less chances of application going down okay so uh, let's see how this is working in form of basically code so before like proceeding to the code walkthrough let's discuss like what kind of data are we going to update in our data store that is elastic search uh this is how my product data looks like in a in my elastic search data store in our example we will try to update the stock of the product without affecting other properties of the product and elastic search document all right okay so with one thing like two more thing, things actually so i wanted to mention like in the during the code walkthrough i have implemented both producer and consumer in a same service just to develop understanding like how the workflow is working but uh, in real world applications these can implemented as separate microservices and they can be like 
combined and orchestrated in a way in a production in a real world. So I have used uh, Python 3 fast API framework and the async Kafka and async Elasticsearch client. Uh, we will be going through each step like producing and pushing data to Kafka and again consuming from Kafka. Okay. So, and sending consuming from Kafka and then processing it and sending it for an update to Elasticsearch. In my code, I've defined a retail streamer which signifies my overall data streamer having two components, producer and consumer. So this is the code for producing and the pushing the data to Kafka. First, uh, we initialize our fast API application, as you can see, then initialize our Kafka client. I'm using my, like, I'm using the AIO Kafka client to support the async and await operations. So this can help me to like basically distribute or process my updates asynchronously on the application level. So uh, main function begins from the line 21 where I have defined method by name Kafka produce, which will take the data payload from the request. So as you can see, it's taking the data payload and also it is taking the topic name as well. So it will assign some message ID to it. And then it will just send this to the AIO, like to the Kafka producer uh, via, like, as you can see, AIO producer is actually sending my message to the Kafka. Okay. So in this way, we are actually producing the message. So overall, like this is the code, which will be worked like once the acknowledgement is sent to the customer, like the order has been placed, this code will get, uh, activated and uh, this will be this code will be responsible for uh, sending that update all the like all the summarized things in the message that what has to be done so this is how overall request payload and the response looks like if an like, order is placed on the app as i said it will send it is sending the payload to the kafka so this is how the payload looks like uh, you can also observe that i am separately creating a message id which is unique this will like this message id can be helpful to trace my updates if they were successful on the consumer side or not or uh, did it got failed uh, do, like on the producer side so this is like the trace id can be helpful for me all right so that was for the data producer now uh, we are looking at the code for the data consumers so once my message has been produced and pushed to kafka uh, this is the code for consuming data from Kafka and updating data to, and this code is will be also responsible to update data to Elasticsearch. So the overall uh, implementation is same as, as it was for the producer code. Uh, you can see that the main function begins from the line eight where I have defined method by name Kafka consume. Uh, this will take data from the Kafka queue and uh, this basically actually holds the queue every time to see if any message has been received or not. So this is kind of a real time. So let's say if my data set is really small and uh, uh, how should I say, like it's in 1000, 2000 or, so this will be like consumed in like very fast, like within one second or two seconds. So there will be a, like it will be a real time based. So once we receive this message, uh, as you can see, we process them before sending it to Elasticsearch. So in Elasticsearch also, we are like sending this as a bulk update. So from Kafka, let's say we have received some kind of uh, like thousand messages and uh, I'm sending them a batch of 500, 500 to the Elasticsearch, making my code actually like better performing. So this is how overall like request looks like, which it has consumed it from the Kafka. The response basically tells that data was consumed and updated to Elasticsearch successfully. And you can also see that it is also like telling me for from which topic it is coming, like from which topic it is actually consuming the messages. So uh, let's look at the data update code. So once we have received the data, now my service, which is separate from the Kafka queue will be responsible to update this, this like the information coming from the message to the Elasticsearch. Now, this is the code for processing the data and sending 
update to ES from the message, uh, update to the ES. From the message, we get product ID. And in context to our example, I'm storing document with underscore ID, which will be uh, like, which will be my product ID. And the underscore ID here in, in the Elasticsearch shows it, it is a unique document. Then it fetches the document from the ES on the basis of the underscore ID. And then we update the only necessary document which has to be updated. So this is how a uh, final update to the ES looks like after going through producer consumer flow. So as you can see, like earlier mass, like the product stock was five. And let's say uh, I shopped on the app and then uh, I basically checked, like I put those two items and then checked out successfully. And after that, it sent the acknowledgement to my system and it sent the update back to the Remita store. Now the stock has been changed here. So you can see you can change the any kind of information you want. And this can be handled on the service uh, layer, actually. So conclusion and learnings from this talk is, uh, first of all, like we learned about producer consumer models. Uh, how do they work, their advantages to process billions of data. Second thing is uh, we had a deep dive in the example of producer consumer, how they can be used by taking a real example. Then third, we understand, uh, understood like how the data store is being updated and like how we can achieve a better performance and other benefits using a messaging queue. Uh, so these are the conclusion and learnings. Most of the learnings I have covered. Uh, if anyone is interested to see the Python code implementation, how things are working together as a whole system, they can like find the whole code uh, on my Git repository. Uh, I also have a proper documentation for that to, if you are interested to take a uh, deep exploration in my code and want to run it locally, then it's all there. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also reach me out on Matrix, email, or LinkedIn. Those are my social handles. All right. Uh, that's all from my end. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you to the EuroPython community for having me here. Yeah, wow, super nice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we have a uh, one question for you. Yes. Um, and it says, are you using Faust to process Kafka topics? Uh, I mean, like, Faust, no. So basically, I'm using Fast API application, Fast API to process those Kafka. Like, Kafka topics are generally like coming from the AIO Kafka client. and the framework which I'm using is the fast API. So fast API is like working. I'm using those inbuilt clients of uh, fast API and the Kafka client, like okay. supporting those async operations. Yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah. Um, and some people here says that the GitHub repo might be a uh, private. Yeah, uh, I will just make it public after this talk. Perfect. Yeah, I forgot to do it public actually. Okay, um, well, if people have uh, more questions, uh, they will ask them in the breakout room, in the uh, parrot. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thank have you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye.